because we go live right away. <laughs> okay, guys, hello and welcome to this call today. It has been weighing heavy on our hearts and uh, we wanted to, to dive into something that honestly is kind of up in our face right now, but has been a conversation that we all should have been having a long time ago. And uh, we participated in Blackout Tuesday yesterday. Uh, but the thing about that is we still want people to be sharing and serving and helping others and getting this message out, out there and having the conversation. Because if we don't stand up and we just stay silent and black ourselves out, that's not helping the issue. And so both Ali and I want to talk to you guys today about our feelings for it you know, what we've been kind of going through this uncomfortable kind of weird time as white privileged women and how we want to change that and use our privilege for the greater good and really step into this and lead during this time and make an impact. So yeah, we're really looking forward to having this conversation. Please jump on, let us know if you're watching the replay and uh, if you're tuning in live, where you're tuning in from. Yeah, it's excited to connect with you guys. It's been a really you know, heavy week in the news and in what's happening in the world. Specifically, I think would say a lot heavier in the U.S. for any of our followers that are in the States. We're in Canada, um, but that doesn't mean that we're not privy to every single detail that's happening out. The media is sharing a ton. This is getting a lot of coverage. And it's always a challenge that whenever there's a tragedy that happens in the world, that that's what it kind of takes for everyone to, to step up to the plate or to start having these conversations. And Carly's right, like this, you know, the level of discrimination and racism that is prevalent across the world is at an all time high, but it has been there for centuries, mm -hmm. centuries. This is an issue that has prevailed massive amounts of communities. And again, as people that we're both white privileged women, that we did not have to experience the same level of hardships, the same level of fears, walking down the street, going to school, being bullied just for the color of our skin. That is something that we need to talk about and become more educated on. And I think, again, the big thing is it's, it doesn't matter how many people are following you. You're a leader. You're a leader for your children and your family and your friend group. If you have one follower on social media, you're a leader, you're an influencer, you have the ability to share a message. It doesn't matter if it's like, oh, well, who's listening to me? Someone is, someone's watching you. And it's a good conversation to start eliciting those conversations and not feeling you know, shame or guilt that, okay, well, we didn't talk about it before, but now we are. It's better that we're talking about it at all than just staying silent. This is not a time to just mute yourself and go into the dark and say, well, someone else will handle it and they've got it covered. I think the more conversations that we can have and the more discussions and feeling open about it, that if we slip up or say the wrong thing, I would rather stumble my way through than stand back at the starting line and just never do anything. So just starting those conversations, looking at different media outlets that you can trust the resources from, and connecting with some really incredible influencers. So that's been a really good time for us. I know for myself personally, I've been looking up different hashtags, following different leaders in their industries to see what are they saying? What are the messages that are being shared? What are the ways that people can start to enact change and just educating? Because then you, once you're educated, now you have knowledge. But we've always said this, knowledge is one thing, but action is another. So you can't, you know, we're not just ingesting this information like it's really good to know what's going on in the world. It's then how can we show up differently? How can we adjust our sales? How can we have this conversation here? It's not Carly and I educating ourselves in the background. We're bringing it to the forefront to talk to our community about it. And we want to hear from you too and how you're educating yourself, who you're following. Who, who's made a difference in your life and opened your eyes to something where it's like, wow, I never saw that perspective. Well, I never considered myself this, but I have been, or I've, I've tolerated things maybe I haven't meant to tolerate, or I've put up with things, I've listened to things, I've participated in things, and that's okay. But maybe now it's the chance to say, I'm ready to make a stand, I'm ready to make a change, and to start to give a space for a lot of people that have so much beauty to shine but unfortunately their light has been dimmed and that's, that's the time to change is that we should be shining a light on all of us and not just us. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's a very weird time right now. You know, for myself, just going through my own reflections, I, I encourage everyone to just take a look at it's okay to have well, it's not okay, but it's it's okay to acknowledge right now anything that may have happened in the past and moving forward. No matter who you are, it's an opportunity now to grow from this. And it, I'm not a racist by any means, but I have not been anti-racist. And there is a big difference. And I've been educating myself on that because a lot of this stuff is very unconscious. It's just my biases that I've had up that I've never really even thought about, like how engaged in the conversation are people in col of color, you know, within our content, within our trainings, within all these different things. And it's really brought into light some of the gaps that I've found. And, and I have extensive training in anti-oppression with my social work background and specifically indigenous people and how they are over overrepresented in so many cases within Canada when it comes to the healthcare system and poverty and prisons and foster care, like in Canada, you know, black people and anyone of color is absolutely discriminated against and experiencing terrible racism systematically and direct. But here in Canada, uh, our numbers point to indigenous people and I have training in that. And yet there's still so much in my life, just it kind of smacked me in the face this past week. And I've done a lot of crying and a lot of reading and a lot of just like self-reflection. And I want to share that with everyone and to let you know that it's okay to forgive yourself, but it's not okay to just forget and then not do anything about it. As Ali said, it is our responsibility to step up. And as I mentioned earlier, we have privilege for, for the white folks watching this. And primarily this group is made up of a white population. Why is that? We want to work to diversify it and to make it more inclusive because maybe it's not as inclusive as we've thought. How can we do better? How can we be better allies and use our white privilege for the greater good? Because we were given these rights for nothing. Like they just came to us when we were born. And yet someone that is exactly the same situation potentially, but just because their skin is different, they come from a different area, they're not given those same rights and that's not okay. But what we can do with our rights is have a voice and say something because many of the counts uh, that I've been following and, and learning more about this, a lot of people of color are saying we need white voices because we need you to back us up because people listen to you and they are being heard, which is amazing. I'm so thankful that people of color are banding together and having their voices heard, but they still need us as allies. They still need us to say something. And we can do all the research we, we want, and I encourage you to, but at the end of the day, we'll never truly know what it feels like. We can be informed and we can support, but if you don't know what it truly feels like and you make a comment that maybe isn't interpreted right or whatever it is, do not give up and say, oh, well, no one wants to hear what I say. I'm just suspending people. I need to stop. Keep the conversation going. Ask people. We want to give you some strategies here on what you can do moving forward. So yes, we're going to be explaining what we feel, but we're also going to be giving you some strategies. So please stick with us and watch because we want you guys to be having these conversations, asking questions. So when you slip up and say something or you post something and someone says, you know what, that's actually not, that's not the answer here. Or that's, you know, you shouldn't say it that way or whatever it is. If someone gets offended by it, don't just stop, continue the conversation and ask how you can do it better. Maybe personally message that person. It is not the responsibility of people of color to educate us. It is our responsibility to educate ourselves and ask the right questions and be respectful and sensitive to what's going on. I see a lot of people specifically upset about the riots, for example. And that's a really hard thing as bystanders to be watching because we don't understand it and we don't know what's going on. The media is glorifying the riots, but I am literally brought to tears every time I see videos of police officers standing arm in arm with the people marching or they're down on their knees with their hands up or they're giving hugs. Like that to me is so powerful and that's not being seen as much on television. And yes, the riots are scary. It's absolutely scary. But remember that many of the protesters are there to spread a message. 
The protesters are not looting, it's looters that are looting. It's people wanting to take advantage of the situation. And not to mention, people do crazy things when they're really hurting. And how are we to know what it feels like? If someone were to be doing this to me for generations, who knows what I would do? So I'm not even going to have an opinion about the riots because it's not really my responsibility to be thinking about that. It's how can I still spread the positive message and know that the 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 few have maybe given out the wrong message for the greater good but a lot of those protesters they're protesting against something that matters and that's what we need to focus on and focus on the greater message and how we can continue this movement because it's something that needs to continue and we can't just let this slide and we have to figure out how we can change the way that we're operating in a daily basis we shared a really good article in our instagram stories yesterday about how you can really be kind of asking yourself good questions and and changing the narrative about what you're doing and and changing up some of your content and the people that maybe you follow and the people that you hire and in your workplace and all these different things that maybe you didn't even realize and that's the biggest thing for me is kind of taking off these blinders that I've had on for way too long and knowing that I've been a part of the problem and not the solution but it's okay, I forgive myself and I'm moving forward and we're gonna now create some change. Yeah. And, I, and I believe that we can. Yeah, vulnerability is a beautiful thing. The, the people that I followed and the messages that I've been, have been reading and listening to, it is an incredible amount of vulnerability that's coming through. So again, owning your past, but knowing that I have the choice to change. That's the beautiful thing about evolution is it's a choice. And it, systemically, that choice hasn't been made. That's why there's been this divide for so long is because it's so deep rooted within our system. So it has to take like an entire system, an evolutionary change to really say we're done and we're shifting. So I can look back and at yesterday at Ali 1.0 and go, I'm going to be a better version of that, that, that me. And today I can show up as Ali 2.0 and go, I'm more educated. I can be better. And tomorrow I can do even more. So not even, there's no shame. There's no blame. There's no judgment because that just halts the train and nothing, there's no movement there. So you just own it and embrace it and go, okay, you know what? I know what I can do better. And in the past, that's where it lives is in your past. We've all made mistakes. We've all succumbed to societal pressures, peer pressures, societal norms, thinking this is just the way it is. So I'll just kind of go with the flow. And we often don't challenge that system until really heavy things happen. And then we start to like, it kind of snaps you out of your bubble. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, maybe, maybe I am actually a part of the problem. By not doing anything, I'm, 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 not, I'm also not really... I'm not changing anything either. I'm not changing myself. I'm not evolving the picture. So thinking that you don't matter, that your voice doesn't matter, you're not loud enough, what, what, like, what difference am I going to make? If every single one of us continues to think, what difference am I going to make? Then literally nothing will change. That's the problem is we often think in such a solitary space. Of, it's just me or just my kids or just my family. Like, like, you know, I'm not on the news and I don't have a thousand followers and like, who's really going to listen to me? If it just starts with one person saying, I'm going to make a stand today and then the next and the next, if it's me and Carly, that's two more people. If it's you, that's one more person. That's that many more people that have a better voice, a better platform, a better message that gets to connect with more people, build more, build more allies, build more partnerships. It just adjusts your sales ever so slightly. It's not changing every epic cell in your body. It's just changing your thinking ever so slightly to really blend and adapt to where we need the world to go. If we want to continue to be a functioning space, that's what needs to happen is we just need to start to shift. And like Carly had said, one of the biggest things when you address yourself as a leader, you look for feedback. You do not know everything. We do not know everything. And that's a gift. I don't want to know everything. I don't want to stand here on my soapbox like, we're doing so great. Like, we're not. We, we want to learn. We want to do better. That's a platform that I want to stand behind is one that I can go, we get to evolve. Our branding and our messaging and our mission isn't so carved out that we're like, this is who we are. Nothing can change about us. Absolutely not. We're an evolutionary little bubble that gets to shift and ebb and flow. 
and we get to ask our audience, how can we do better? And, and we're open to that. And if someone says, if you should have on more guests that are this, or you should be featuring more of this, or you could talk about this, because we have influence. We have a group, we have followers, we have, we have people that will watch and listen to us and we wanna share that message. But we wanna know where to direct our message to and who wants to listen so that we wanna get that feedback from you guys. I think that that's just such a powerful part of learning in your vulnerability is that if you show up and someone gives you some feedback of, hey, maybe this message could be shifted or this is a more important topic or talk about this or focus, take that in as an opportunity not as an insult and a rejection, like, oh, I'm never gonna show up again. They shut me down, that's okay. You look at it as feedback. So it's just looking at things through a different lens to embrace what's going on in the world and actually start to enact some real change. And that's how we'll get into strategies. But I know for Carly and myself, moving forward in our business, we have a lot of really great things that we can start to adapt in that can really evolve how we build out ambition babes and, and utilize the platform that we do have for the greater good and for there to actually be some change happening, which is the coolest thing of all. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And we know that if you're in this group, you have a heart. You, I mean, everyone has a heart, but you have that soul that you want to give and you want to help serve people. You want to be part of something better and positive. So we know that you're not filled with hate but we wanna help guide you and help just like us, pull off those blinders and be a leader because right now we can influence like our children especially. Unfortunately, I, I do believe that we won't see as much of uh, a, a monumental change in our generation. I'm, I'm hopeful for it and we're gonna do our best, but I truly believe that in future generations, it could become something that was like a part of the past because our children will learn to not be filled with hate and discrimination and biases. And, you know, there, there won't be as much privilege going on because it will be more of an equal society. That's not the case right now. So right now, if we take the time, especially to teach our younger generations, for those of you that are parents or have younger family members, take this time to talk to them. And like even even our friends and family, like I had a uh, you know just a wine night with my girlfriend the other night, and for a big chunk of time, we talked about this very conversation with my husband. I've had a major kind of breakthrough with him in talking about you know he works in the construction industry, and it's a lot of offhand comments that are not okay, and he may not be participating in it, but he's not sticking up for anyone. And so we talked about how you can start having those conversations. And in that article, I, again, that we shared on our Insta stories, it talks about how you can ask someone a question. So especially when it's uncomfortable and like, I don't like confrontation. So like, it's hard for me when someone says something to call them on it about anything. doesn't matter what it is, race or whatever. It's hard for me to kind of have confrontation, but it doesn't necessarily need to be confrontation. It can be a moment of clarity and, and education and kind of like, oh, I never even thought about that. You know, and so if someone says something, say it's a friend or family member, maybe just pause for a moment and don't just say that's racist because then it might cause some defensiveness. What I would suggest doing and what they've what these articles have suggest doing is asking, what do you mean by that? Or do you understand that that could be considered racist or discriminatory? Or do you see that that's maybe not kind or that, you know, something like that? so that you can have a conversation about it and see where they're coming from to maybe provide some insight on why that's not okay and how that perpetrates the problem. And it's so easy right now because people are on both sides and there's some people just throwing out a bunch of hate because they don't understand what's going on. And they think that this whole movement is ridiculous and they're only consumed by, again, the few people maybe that are looting and, and rioting and doing these kinds of things. And that's what this has become instead of this beautiful message of change. So when those people say something, and again, I also did not know enough about riots and whatnot in the beginning either. So I was confused by them too. But how can we start educating our loved ones? And if you see someone maybe that you don't know, it's still okay for you to call that person out. Or if you feel unsafe to do so, then how can you take action? You know, report them, 
or if it was a if it was in the if it was in a store or an establishment you know is there a way to talk to the manager about the behavior about whatever was happening or maybe you just see something that was not done wrong but maybe could be more inclusive and you have a good idea for an establishment that maybe hadn't even thought of how they were being exclusive and how they could be more inclusive Maybe you just go to that manager and said, you know what? I love this place that you've got going on here. But one thing I've noticed is that maybe this could be changed to be more welcoming. Or maybe this could be done. Or maybe you could take down that particular sign or whatever, you know. And so there's lots of things that we can do without being abrasive and to the point where people don't want to hear us. And they get defensive and then it turns into an argument and a fight. Now, it is still okay for you to say that's racist and that's not okay. You need to do what feels right in the moment. But sometimes when we come at people with those kinds of words, being called a racist is, is a very strong hit to the heart. And a lot of people wouldn't even recognize that they're a racist. That's just a joke. Or well, look what they're doing. You know what I mean? Those people, you know, that's another thing that people say, oh, those people or whatever it is. They group people together and stereotype. Those kinds of comments are not okay. And if we can start addressing them and having the confidence and the courage, because that's what it's going to take on my part. I live in a small community and unfortunately it happens. It happens more almost, I feel like, in these small communities. And for anyone thinking, oh, well, Canada doesn't have this type of stuff. It absolutely friggin' does. We're just a little better at hiding it. So really have the courage to step up and be a leader during this time and go take the time to read that article in our Instagram stories. It's just add ambition, babes. I'll even share it again. I'll put it in here maybe because it's so good and it's really I'm great. Sure. Yeah, it's really good at like just looking at are people of color represented in my content? Are people of color being featured? Am I following people of color? Am I reading books that are informed? on these types of movements like what are, are are people of color being you know if you're if you're in an office space or you're you're doing a community project or whatever are all populations represented i mean we can't be perfect but if you can start trying you know there was a there's a community group right now they're wanting to lead a peaceful protest in my community and one of the comments was have you reached out to the local indigenous bands have you reached out to any of the other, you know, the multicultural club to see if we can find it in my community? There isn't actually as many people of color. There's a lot of indigenous people, but they had good intentions of like, yes, let's do this peaceful protest. But they also forgot to include a very important population, which is the people that they're wanting to help. Right. So it's those kinds of things. It's not that you're trying to have ill intentions. It's that you don't even think about things. So really, if you're thinking about it, or have people been considered? Are they involved in the conversation? Those are the kind of questions to ask yourself and move forward. I love it. And from you guys, I'd love to hear from you if you are following anyone right now on Instagram or on Facebook. I would love to know who is inspiring you right now. Yeah. Because I know that I gravitate towards certain accounts on Instagram right now that are sharing so much positivity, sharing so much, just great content, great info, like very insightful, not shameful. Like they're not like you did it wrong. So here it's like, you didn't know it's yeah. that you didn't know better. And now that you do know, it's kind of like people that are allowing my eyes to become open without feeling like I'm judging myself for being blind all these years. So it's giving me an opportunity to feel like I can be a part of something without that shame or judgment of like, oh my God, I, maybe I haven't shown up as much and maybe I've been a part of the problem or like, I just, you, you all of a sudden get consumed with all these thoughts and you're like, I'm just not going to do anything. I don't want to feel that way. So I want to be able to follow people that encourage me, that kind of bring me up and out. So we want to hear from you guys, because if you follow someone that you're aligned with, it's likely that we're going to be aligned with them too. We're, we're all here together because we all have a lot of alignment with one another and we have formed this big, beautiful tribe. So any way that we can support someone, follow them, share their content, because I think that's a big thing is, is being able to share more content um, and give credit to where credit is due. I've seen a lot of people say like, I made these images and then People, you know, edit out my name and take credit for them. So we want to give credit where credit is due. If there's books, articles, anything that has helped you, 
that's likely also going to help us. And like Carly said, that article, so we'll share that now into the group so that it doesn't go away in our stories. We can do some screenshots and share that so that you guys can have access to that as well. But just knowing that you have that opportunity to kind of do a little bit of research on your own, kind of pick and choose who's really speaking to you, whose message is coming through for you, so that you still have every day that opportunity to have that dose of awareness, of education, and then figuring out for yourself, how do I want to take action? Because again, knowledge is only knowledge, but it's power when you put it into action. So what are the steps? For us, like this was a big thing is that we wanted to have a conversation. It's not that we're just going to post some great things on our Instagram that inspire us. We want to elicit conversations because if this falls on one person's ears and they're like, that really helped me shift my perspective. You know what? You're right. I do have influence. I don't need to have a hundred thousand followers to then have a voice. I only need one to have a place. And maybe I haven't been using it enough because I've been scared to educate myself, but that's okay. And I'm going to show up vulnerable. I'm going to be authentic. We're being authentic with you guys right now. This is us. And we're sharing our journey, how we're learning, how we're adapting, how we're educating, and how we're taking action to change the, to change the narrative. And it literally starts with one person. So just know that you have the ability to be just as much of a leader right now more than ever and kind of start to define your leadership style and asking for that feedback, looking at the people you're surrounding yourself with, maybe having some tough conversations with people about shifting the narrative, even just within your family or your friend group. Maybe you've never had a conversation with your kids about race about prejudice, about discrimination, have those conversations. Maybe you've never had that with your friends. Like Carly said, she just met with their friend. Maybe that would have never dominated their conversation at any time would they've ever had a conversation about prejudice or discrimination or social injustice. It just did. And that's fine. We don't have to look back and go, look at all the things I haven't done. It's look at all the things that I can do, that I get to do now. That's what we want to focus on. So no shame, no blame, no judgment. It's happened. It's how can I show up today to really start to educate and, and enact the change and, and spread the word and do something different so that, like Carly said, you set up a future generation. Can we shift everyone and every ability? I don't know, but we can certainly do it for our children. And we can certainly do it for ourselves. In the very least, I know for me, I can speak for my own accountability of the things that I'll be personally doing to shift those conversations. So that's, again, I feel like so many people are, it's like with voting too, like, oh, why even bother voting? My vote won't matter. It does. Every vote matters. So every, every thought leader, every person matters in this. And because there's so many underrepresented populations, your voice matters. And speaking out and speaking up on things that you're passionate about and that you feel empowered about, it matters. And I just want to leave you guys with that because I think it's just such a powerful time to really start to shift the energy of the world because we are energetic beings and we can really start to create something positive and beautiful and create friendships and unity and build, build more allies in the world. I think that's such a gift to really get to link arms with people and move forward together um, is something to be proud of and know that you can be a part of a really, really special time. And again, shift that for generations to come. Yeah. I love that. I wanted to leave you with one little uh, picture that I saw and it really made me think it was a little the cutest little black boy and he had a little sign and it says when do i go from being cute to being scary and that hit me right in the heart and that little boy could potentially experience being just cute rather than having to shift into being scary being seen as scary young black men already are have experienced hate and hurt but that little boy holding that sign might not have to if we make a change today. We can make a change, all of us. And that just like literally gives me shivers to think that cute little boy can forever just be cute. He doesn't have to be known as scary because they're not scary, they are people. Anyone can be scary and anyone can be cute, but your color does not define if you're scary or cute. 
how you lead your life does. So thank you all so much. We appreciate you guys. And uh, again, just think about how you're showing up right now, the conversations that you're having, the reflections that you're having, the learning that you're doing and uh, sending you all so much love, every single one of you. And uh, yes, please post any, any great articles or inspiring things within this group or in this feed if you want. Uh, reach out if you need support, if you have any ideas or ways for us to be more inclusive, whether you are a person of color or you're an ally, if there's any way that we can be more educated if you see things that we could be doing better words that we've said we want to change and we're open to it and again just love and respect all of you guys amazing take care guys bye